welcome to another guitar show and tell. Uh, excuse my rather hippie-like zombie apocalypse kind of hairdo. Um, I should have been to the barbers, but I haven't been able to get an appointment. Um, so uh, just let it go. Don't comment. Don't comment. Um, so I have another guitar to show you, and um, this one is particularly special as well. Um, I say that, I mean, I say that about lots of my guitars, but um, this one particularly, uh, I'd forgotten I'd even bought it until it turned up. Uh, and I was like, what's that package? And there was a guitar in there. Um, of course, I knew it was a guitar because it was just too big to be anything else, really. So if you've seen some of my other videos, you'll see me um, talk quite often about Japanese copies of acoustic guitars. Um, which I particularly love because I think in the early, in the late 60s, kind of early 70s, Japan, various manufacturing plants in Japan were pushing out some amazingly good quality copies of Gibsons, Martins, Guilds, things like that. Um, obviously not the same, but not a million miles away for very cheap money. Um, so I had the opportunity uh, about a week ago, I think it was, and I saw this copy of a guitar and I thought, I, I like the look of that. I like the condition of it. Um, and I think I can do something good with that. Um, so let me show you what I've bought. And then we'll just talk around what it's like and what I'm going to do to it. So here is the guitar. Can you see if you can guess what it is? If you move forward, does that give you a clue? How about that? What about now? Does that give you a clue? That should give you a big, big clue. So it is a hummingbird copy. Um, but which manufacturer is it? It is, in fact, a Columbus. Uh, so again, it is Japanese made um, because the sticker tells me that it's Japanese made rather than Korean made or, or Chinese made. Um, but it's lovely. Look at this. So when you got the typically the 50s, 40s sunburst finish. They were typically uh, like a more of a brown, whereas this is slightly more red. Um, and this was quite common in the late 60s, early 70s and that. So this is, um, again, a guitar that I would say is probably 70s, early 70s. Uh, but look at that, it's really nice, and that pick guard is in really good condition. Considering this guitar is probably at least 50 years old, if not 60 years old. So adjustable um, saddle, so that you can adjust the height uh, and intonation of your strings. The lovely little mother of pearl, although I suspect that is probably plastic rather than mother of pearl. Um, and then, again, up to the very familiar Gibson-type um, kind of fretboard inlays. And this is where you can start to see the difference in what I would expect from Gibson. Is you can just see the edge, the edges of the kind of inlays are just not quite as sharp as you would like them to be. That one there's not quite parallel with a fret. And things like that so there were some real signs that these were made much cheaper the kind of stick on um, uh, rosette thing that goes on the pick guard there look there's a cobweb in there as well um, but other, I have to say other than that all the ones that I've had so far have been really really nice and if I just give it a quick flip over without wrecking it we'll see if we can Get a view of that. <clears throat> and again, yeah, look at that. I mean, that's that's a weapon, that is. Um, not many people do that, that kind of 
point you now. But as you look round it, I mean, it's in really good condition, I have to say. Um, there you go, made in Japan. Uh, so yeah, so it's a really good, really good guitar. So obviously there are some things I need to do to it just to get it back in good shape. Not least, as you can probably imagine, like I say so many times, the action is too high. It's uh, way, way too high. Um, now surprisingly, the bridge is not actually that thick. So, uh, and I've held a ruler up against it and it literally just skims the top. So the action in terms of the neck to the bridge is pretty good. Um, so I think I'm gonna have to make some adjustments to the saddle and see what I can do, given that this is a fixed metal piece here and an adjustable saddle. So I'll have to play around with that and see quite what I can do. Um, but it may be that I can't get the action quite where I I would like it. Um, there is no bellying as such on the body. Um, it's pretty much flat as a pancake. Um, so I've had a, a ruler up against it and there's almost, it's negligible. So, so there's that to do. And of course, put some new strings on it because these strings are corroded as anything. There is dirt on the fretboard that you can see in there. So that needs to come off and be polished up. Um, chances are I'll probably polish the frets up as well. There's not a, there's not masses of wear on the frets some grooves um, so again I'll probably just tidy those up the the nut I suspect is plastic um, so I might just have a look at that I might tie that up this has got this zero fret for those who've never seen this before um, some of the sort of budget Japanese manufactured guitars would have this zero fret, which effectively acts as a bit of a nut and also allows a bit more vibration through the fretboard. Um, so on Echo guitars, they have these as well. Um, and it's not an uncommon thing to see. I don't particularly like them, but um, it's just the way they're manufactured. So this is a zero fret. So the string actually sits on top of this and it acts almost as a nut. Um, and the nut itself acts more of a, uh, a guide than anything else. Um, so the headstock's in really good, dusty as hell. The headstock's in really good condition. So there's no real major dings and dents and stuff like that. There's a couple of little bits there which I could tidy those up. So, and another little one there. Um, so overall, neck kind of body i mean tiny little things like this which i can take care of there's a bit of a scratch here so i need to figure out whether that is whether i can polish that out or whether i need to maybe seal it with a, a little bit of ca glue and then polish it up i mean some of these i might just leave because they are part of the character of the guitar tiny little things like this um, the next bigger thing I've got to do is there's a bit of binding here, which is obviously snapped off. So I don't know what I'm going to do there yet. What I might do is see if I can find a piece of replacement binding and then just shave this into a little square shape, square shape, and then fill that in and then seal it and then polish it up so you know it's almost invisible um so there's that bit to do uh, the rest of it i have to say the back looks remarkably good for a guitar of this age there's no real kind of marks and things there's tiny little things but some of these i mean that let's just scuzz on the on top of the guitar so some of these I think will come out fairly easily and tiny little scratches like that, I think I can cover those up quite easily. So on the whole, um, a lovely guitar. Look at that detail where they cover the neck in there. 
And there's a tiny little hairline. Is that a scratch? I think that's a scratch actually. I think that's a scratch. So again, I might be able to polish that out. Um, but on the whole, I have to say it's a very good condition, very pretty guitar. Uh, so, yeah. So there you go. Um, a Columbus Hummingbird copy. Um, so not a huge amount to do to it. So the key things are to fix the little bit of binding on the bottom somehow. Uh, take the strings off and replace those anyway. Give the fretboard a really good clean. Reduce the action on the saddle end as per usual. Clean up the headstock. Buff out some of those little minor scratches and things. Um, and get a haircut. Uh, other than that, it'll be good to go. So again, watch out for this. Um, I may do a video on some of the works as I'm doing it and put those on, on, on YouTube and things like that. But it will be going on my online shop. It will be going on Facebook. It will be going on Reverb, eBay, all those lots. Um, so keep your eyes out for a nice piece of proper Japanese made hummingbird copy.